Hi, this is Pat McNamara, and this is Catholic History in Less Than Five Minutes. Our topic today is Constantine the Great and Christianity. In the year 305, the Emperor Diocletian, whom we had mentioned last week, abdicated the throne, which led to war among several Roman generals. The winner was Constantine the Great, who would extend official toleration of Christianity with the Edict of Milan in 313 AD. At the time, Constantine was not a Christian. He was baptized much later. But he believed the Christian church could be a kind of unifying force in what was a declining empire. Not until the year 380 would Christianity become Rome's official religion. Now, not only did the Edict of Milan extend toleration to Christianity, it also extended public funds. Now, Christians had better worshiping arrangements. Basically, they were allowed to move upstairs out of the catacombs. Now, churches were built over sites where martyrs were buried, like St. Peter's Basilica. Other churches were built on the site of former pagan temples, like Santa Maria Sopra Minerva, which means St. Mary's over Minerva. It was over the temple, former temple of Minerva. As the British historian R.A. Marcus notes, as Christians built churches and shrines honoring the martyrs, they created a new sacred geography and eventually reshaped Roman culture. But they were influenced in turn as well. Many of the vestments now worn by priests and deacons at Mass have their roots in this era. But here was the big problem. State control of the church. Still a problem today in some countries. Even before he was baptized, Constantine didn't hesitate to intervene in church affairs. Perhaps the most famous example was his calling the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD. About 250 bishops participated, as did Constantine, who even took part in the theological debates. Again, I want to remind you this is before his baptism. Nicaea was the first of 21 ecumenical councils in church history. Now, we use the word ecumenical primarily today in reference to interfaith issues, but its original meaning is universal, in the sense that it was a gathering of all the bishops in the world, uh, hence it was a universal council. The immediate cause for Nicaea was the rise of a heresy known as Arianism, named for the Egyptian priest Arius, who argued basically that Jesus was a good man, but no God. Arianism was one of numerous misconceptions, also known as heresies, which occurred in the early Christian era. Uh, some believed that the Trinity was an idea rather than a person. Some believed that the fallen away could not be saved. Some believed in a mixture of pagan and Christian beliefs. The Council affirmed official teaching by issuing the Nicene Creed, which Catholics still use today. Now, during the Constantinian era, the Catholic Church faced numerous challenges from within. These included numerous heretical movements, which we'll discuss at more length. It also meant increased state control, a problem they hadn't faced in the days of Nero or Diocletian. Nevertheless, coming up out of the catacombs meant that Christianity would reshape the Western world and its culture as no religion has before or since. And that made all the difference for the church